The choir is getting ready. A Liberian family, scattered by war across two continents, gathers for the funeral of Princeton Miller. His mother struggled to get Princeton to America, into a better life. She felt he'd find his way with family in Providence. He did. He was 26, working, and about to start nursing school. And then it was over. You don't believe what his mother is going through. She have not slept for days. I'd call her almost every now and then, just to make sure that she's okay. She fought hard for her kids since she brought them to this country, because she had a dream that they would become better people. And nobody's been in the pain more than her. This kid is the first kid from our family that have been killed since we've been to America. I have a lot of family here, yeah. cousin, brother, sister, relative, all over America. Nobody has been killed. And I went to work after being home for two days, and then I'm, I'm in the forklift and I'm driving, and I'm just sitting there, and it just hit me that Princeton is dead. Yeah, you couldn't believe it. And I started crying. I'll tell you how much I felt what they did to this kid, especially when I think about how they killed him. Starving that's that's what so get me. You know, it's how they kill death. him. That's what get me. How they kill him. I read the police report. Prince was not stabbed like one time. He was stabbed several multiple times. times. Several times. You know, Princeton was about to go home. He said he wanted to go see some other friends. And I was walking outside. And when he came outside, he met this group of guys like bothering the dog. <laughs> And then Princeton said, hey, you guys stop hiring this dog. These dogs are bad. These dogs are going to bite you. Princeton was trying to get in his car, but then these guys, you know, stopped being a little hostile. He said, one of the guys said, hey, you got your blade? That's when the father Princeton, and then stabbing. Sat stabbing him. He and two of the other guys, you know, was like pushing each other, and then he took a flower pot and threw it at them. And then all of a sudden, all of them just start running, you know. Got out of the gate, and then he like Princeton, Princeton. When he went, he saw Princeton in a pool of blood. I I, I talked to the lady at the funeral home, and she like, oh, you gotta get me a do rag. I'm like, why? She said they also caught him on his face. They caught him on the face. That's what the lady me? told me. So oh. they trying to fix it a way where they can cover it after they sew it up when he lay in his gasket, so at least he can look presentable. Oh so gashing with on his face with yeah. the yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like. What, so I sat down thinking, like, what was this guy thinking? Why? I don't know what he was thinking, why he did what he did, you know? Lamar Wilburn is only 18, yet he's been in handcuffs several times. And, and look at this kid, he's 18 years old. The Crips know him as C. Easy. Hey, I'd just like to sit down and talk with him one-on-one -on -one and ask, dude, what yeah. happened? If anybody told him that's what make a man, yeah. to lie to you. They completely lie to you. That's not what make a man. Mm -hmm. I've had a terrible life. Mm -hmm. I was a refugee for over 13 years. I was in war for over seven years. I stayed hungry. I didn't have all the opportunity they have in this country. Even, even, even the police or people have television and they get food to eat. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that lifestyle, but we still have hope. I mean, shouldn't blame the system. Shouldn't blame the police. You shouldn't blame the judge. Shouldn't even blame us, the family. Mm -hmm. We didn't want this to happen. Nobody got up and said, hey, let somebody kill my nephew so they can spend the rest of their freaking life in jail. Mm -hmm. Nobody mm -hmm. want that. But this is what happened. Mm -hmm. Prince is not going to come back. It's not like, okay, we'll catch the guys who are responsible for this crime. And then you're going to have Prince and everything is going to be all right. I mean, the kid is dead. The kid is dead. It's a tragedy. He's dead. Princeton's grandfather, Mac, and his uncles, Alex and Derek, collect his belongings. Hey, Pingo. God damn it. It's okay, you fight nothing, my son. Mm. Anyway, go fix everything. Uh-huh. It's the day after Princeton would have started his studies at Sawyer School. And I called the principal when I told the principal he never believed it that the boy died. He said, what? 
I said Pring, Pringo will not even want to, uh, I said Pringo will not come back to the school again because he's he not here anymore. He said, what happened? I said, he's dead. The man said, stop. The clothes will be given to his younger brother. His ashes will be collected by his mother. He was a nice kid. He ain't got no problem at all. She urges her family to leave Providence for good. She says she don't want her son to be buried in Providence. She's totally mad with Providence and she's taking his body back. She's taking his ashes with her. I will love him.